2019. So in this example, we are going to go over the Roku trade uh, that happened on May 9, 2019. The trade type, it was a day trade. The trade setup was an earnings gap play, right? So let's get started. So this is the pre-market. This is how Roku looked that day. So I'm going to walk you through each component. So on 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time on May 9th, 2019, this is how Roku's chart looked on a daily time frame. Okay. Now, why was Roku on our watch list? There was a million stocks out there, but why was Roku that one stock that we focused on on the pre-market? Roku is on watch because Roku had earnings yesterday and beat on revenue and earnings per share. But the main thing is that they increased their full year outlook. Now, remember guys, when I mentioned that when a company increases their full year outlook, that's huge. Like that's very, very big. So that's basically when a company has earnings and they say, hey, we were expected to make, let's say $100 million, but now we are uh, expecting to make $110 million. So when a company increases their full year outlook, that's a very, very good sign. Now, if a company decreases their full year outlook during earnings, that's a very bad sign. So this is something very important to focus on when you guys are looking at earnings plays, right? So that's why Roku is on our watch. Now, we set out important levels on the larger time frame. So when we look at a three-year time frame, we identify our major critical levels. And as you guys can see, stock made a huge run and it has been forming a bull flag, okay? And it also has been going in a downward channel with a major resistance level around 70. Now, this is a daily time frame. Now, obviously, we want to dig down and go into an intraday time frame and break down the logistics. So when we break down an intraday time frame, this is what we see happening on pre-market. You guys can see how Roku is up heavy on pre-market. So 9.25 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. So we have five minutes to go till the market opens. Market opens at 9.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. So once again, we have five minutes to go. Stock is up 10% on over 500,000 shares. That's a strong move. Now, if Roku was up 10% and it was up on like, let's say 20,000 shares or 30,000 shares, I wouldn't really care. But the fact that Roku is up on 500,000 shares, that is huge. Especially the fact that it's up 10% and obviously we know why it's up 10%. So we have our reason on why Roku is up. We have our uh, price movement that is up 10% and we also have volume, right? So all of these things are good signs. Now that does not mean that Roku is going to go up. That does not mean Roku is going to go down. This information that we have right now, guys, this information is just making us aware of this stock. This is what's causing us to pay attention to Roku. This is why this is one of the stocks that we're going to focus on for the day. Now, just last point, the stock is moving up strong on great catalyst, basically incre increased guidance. So we have great catalyst, we have great volume, and we have a great move up. Now, just looking at pre-market, what do you guys see? You guys see the high of pre-market 71.98, a major level. We also have major levels of 71.5 and 69.36. Not exactly those points, but around that range. Now, just looking at this from a simple price action concept, in my opinion, if the stock can break the pre-market high, showcase strong buying pressure on the open, that would be a great trade. Now, obviously, we're not always just going to look at the stock itself. We also want to look at market internals. We want to look at what's happening with the overall market. So now let's look at the overall market. Now, right here, we have the overall market. We have SPY, we have VIX, and we have ES. So what is happening on pre-market with SPY, ES, and VX, uh, VIX, right, VIX? What's going on? So at 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, pre-market, markets are basically selling off. You guys can see SPY selling off, pushing down, ES also pushing down, and you can see VIX. VIX is going up. VIX, once again, represents the fear factor, right? If VIX is going up, that means there's more fear in the market. If VIX is going down, that means there's low fear in the market. So right now in pre-market, there is more fear. Markets are selling off. You can see even ES is at a very critical level. Even SPY is a very critical level. Now, 
there's trade tension between the U.S. and China. The trade, the trade tension between U.S. and China is basically increasing, which is why the market is slowly selling off or pushing down, right? Now, what you guys have to understand is if Roku did not have a catalyst, if Roku was a stock that we just opened up and it maybe had a technical play, then I would heavily focus on market internals. But Roku at this exact moment has a very strong catalyst. Like it has an extremely strong catalyst. So with that being said, we're not just going to ignore market internals because we should never ignore it. But we're not going to put a lot of focus on market internals unless the market starts rapidly selling off on the open. Now, if the market on the open starts selling off and Roku is going up, that's going to make it harder for the stock Roku to go up higher and higher. But if the market pushes down and holds flat, Roku can still possibly push up, maybe not as strong as if the market was rallying. So once again, we are paying attention to market internals, but not as much as we would if the stock didn't have such a great catalyst. Now, the only thing we want to focus on market internals is we don't want to see a crazy sell-off. If we see a crazy sell-off, Roku is not going to be a trade I'm going to be comfortable in taking. But if the market tends to hold on the open, Roku may be a trade that I might possibly take. Now, what is the game plan? The game plan, it's 9.25 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. We have five minutes to go till the market opens. Uh, Roku has a major critical level at 72. Pre-market high, you guys can see right there. Pre-market high, got rejected. Uh, so what we're going to do for this trade right here is we're going to watch an open for a break above 72. And if it's a strong move and buying pressure is still present, enter and take the trade. Now, obviously, when we're looking at buying pressure, we also want to look at market internals. How is the market holding up? If the market is selling off and there's like very negative news, no matter what great news Roku has, I wouldn't be comfortable. But if the market is holding or at least slowly recovering and Roku looks super strong, Roku could be a possible trade that I take. So once again, just to recap, Roku is a stock that's on my watch list. The reason it's on my watch list is because Roku had earnings. Not only did they beat earnings, but they also increased the year guidance. Roku is also at a critical level, right? So if it can break that critical level of $72 on pre-market, I would look to enter the trade. So now what we're going to do is we are going to jump right into the chart and we're going to go minute by minute and check out the trade. And once we check out the trade, I will show you my entries, exits and my trade outcome. All right. So let's take a look at Roku right here. So right here, we, once again, we have the yearly chart. As you guys can see, Roku has been rallying for the past few months, hits a high of $74 and then has been going on a sideways downward channel. Now, when we go to intraday time frame today, you guys can see what happens in the pre-market. This is our pre-market chart. In this pre-market chart, if you guys take a look, you can see that Roku is hitting a high of $72. Let's put a critical level right there. That critical level, 7197, 71, uh, 78 or $72 is our critical area. We know that this stock had a hard time breaking that in the pre-market. So obviously our pre-market highs, pre-market lows also work as our critical levels for our intraday time period. So this is what we see before the market opens. Let's go to a smaller time frame, a five minute. You can see stock went all the way to 72 bucks, got rejected, goes down to about 69, $70. Now that's not a huge push down that shouldn't scare us away it's just fading away. But if the stock can obviously take out the pre-market high, that would be a very, very, very strong sign. Now, what we're going to do is we are going to play this minute by minute starting at 930 a.m. So what I'm going to do is I am going to open up a one minute chart, which I have on the left. This right here is the one minute chart, as you guys can see. And then right here, I'm going to have my five minute chart right here. I have the VWAP. OK, so we're going to look at this and we're going to look to take on a trade if we possibly see a trade. Now, what I want you guys to understand is when you guys are taking on day trades, you have to understand your approach. My approach with this is that this is a day trade. 
I know I don't want to hold this overnight. I know I have to be super, super quick with this. And I know that there's certain levels that the stock has to break before I take on an entry. And that certain level would be 72 bucks. If the stock can break 72, that would give me the utmost confidence. If it can't break 72 and it trades within this range, I would not be comfortable. So the $72 is what I am looking for at this particular moment. All right, so right here, it's gonna play minute by minute and we're gonna watch and analyze the stock and see what is going on. So this is the first minute. Now, what I want you guys to understand about trading is we're never looking to trade the first minute or two or maybe even three at times. That's where a lot of people make mistakes. They enter on the first minute, on the second minute, on the third minute, right off trading. We're not looking to do that. We want to see uh, or we want to see a play after a few minutes. Sometimes I wait at least five minutes if I'm day trading or if I'm scalping. Why? Because the first minute, there's a lot of fake moves that happen. All right. So if you guys take a look right here, you guys are going to see. This is the first minute. Now, if you're watching the first minute, what's going on the first minute? We're only 30 seconds in so far, guys. Only 30 seconds in. If you guys see, the stock is going down. Right, it's going down to 68.99, well, going below 69 bucks, going below 70 dollars. Now, what's happening is at this point, a lot of people are like, oh, it's dumping, let me short, or they get scared, or they don't want to take the trade. We as traders want to wait the first few minutes because the first few minutes there's a lot and a lot of noise. Now, watching this, what do we see so far? Let me pause this just so we can understand. Remember, we have the one minute and we have the five minute. We are now on the second minute. Now, looking at this time frame, looking at this chart right now, what do we see? What happened? Let's zoom in. So what we see that happened is we basically see that bears pushed the stock down until 69. Buyers stepped in and pushed it up. Now, does this mean that the stock's going to go higher? Does this mean that the stock's going to go down? We don't know. Why? Because it's only been a minute and six seconds. We're only in a minute and six seconds. It's very hard to identify what's going to happen. Now, also remember, the bigger picture is that we're not entering the trade until it can break our 72 mark. We don't care about what happens here. We don't care about all the noise that happens at 70. We want to see a break at 72. Why? Because this could fake us out at 71.5 and then dump again. We don't want to be in that trade. We only want to take this trade if it can break 72. So let's play it and keep watching. Now, as we play and we keep watching, once again, we're only in the second minute. Now, what tends to happen here is people see green, especially people that are day trading. And the first thing they do is they immediately execute a trade because they see green. That's not the way to go, guys. Remember, stick to your original plan. What was your original plan? My original plan is still, I'm not entering this stock until it breaks 72. I don't care about this green. Remember, we're only in two minutes right now. This is a second minute candle. And you guys are gonna see a lot of examples where on the second minute candle, the stock reverses and dumps, right? We don't wanna get caught up in that. We want to see a solid break. We wanna see a solid trade. Now, once again, a lot of people are entering here. A lot of people are chasing. I'm going to pause this for one second and just show you guys something. So as you guys are day trading, you can get better at entries and exits. Now, once again, this is a second minute. We are in two minutes. Now, guys, do not take trades on the second minute. Uh, not the best idea. I would at least wait until five. Sometimes there are times I take the trade in the third or fourth minute, but that's if this was breaking 72. Right? right now, it's still below that area. It still hasn't broken the pre-market high. It's still below that range that it needs to break based on my original plan. Why does this not make sense? Because think about it. If I take on the trade here, where's my stop loss? Maybe below 69. Where's my profit target? Right. So that doesn't make sense. This trade just at this particular point does not make sense. This trade would make a lot more sense if it can break 72. Right now, I don't care about all this green. I have to understand that. A lot of traders see this green and they're like, oh man, I see this green. I need to get in. I need to take the trade. No, be patient. Follow your plan. See what happens. We're only in two minutes, guys. Once again, we're in two minutes. Now the third candle is forming. So what tends to happen here if we do minute by minute analysis is a lot of people are seeing this huge green candle and right after they see that huge green candle, they jump in. Once they jump in, guess what happens right after? Boom, a red candle. Now, when we see a red candle, these people that are trying to day trade are panicking. Now, what I want you to understand at this point 
is right now we don't have any trade, right? We have zero trades right now. Well, our trade kicks in if this stock can break 72, and it also depends on, once again, how it breaks 72. What happens? So, so far, what we see happening is the stock made a huge strong move up. After making a huge strong move up, it gets rejected a little bit, and as it gets rejected, buyers are still holding it up at 70.50. There's buyers stepping in at that area. But once again, this does not mean we are looking to take on a trade. We are just watching. We are just seeing what's going on. And as we're watching, you guys can see the next minute is forming again. And so far, we are four minutes in. And this is still the five-minute candle. We have zero trade set up so far. We have nothing. If you took on a trade right here and you made money or you lost money, you did not have a setup. Now, what's going on right here? Now, what's going on is that this stock is taking out the high of the day. Now, it's going to 72. Now, as it goes to 72, I want you guys to pay attention to a few things. Let me pause this and let me set this up so you guys can actually see. What I want to show you here is I want you to see how buyers and sellers become aggressive. Okay, I want you to see how buyers and sellers become aggressive. Now, if you guys take a look here, we have the bid, we have the executed price, and we have the ask. Now, once again, we are four minutes in, right? Now, obviously, when we see something like this, I don't want you guys to enter on the break. So what a lot of people do is they see this and they enter. They're like, oh, I see a breakout. Let me enter. Guys, this is a one-minute candle. A lot of times, these one-minute candles are fake moves. We do not want to enter here, and the next thing you see, it starts dumping. Why? Because these are clear-cut plays. Since these are clear-cut plays, a lot of people are probably going to enter. And since a lot of people are going to enter, that's also going to cause a lot of traps. So what we're going to do is we're just going to watch this, right? Because once again, this is a one-minute candle. It's not a 15. It's not a 5. It's a one-minute. So we're going to watch this, see what happens at 72, and see, does it have a hard time breaking? Does it continue? Does it take a break? What goes on? So what we see right here, it's breaking out very, very strong. Once again, this is a one minute candle. What a lot of people do here is they enter on a huge move like this and then they get trapped. Now what I wanna go through with you guys is I wanna go through the level two. I wanna go through level two, I wanna go through the tape. I want you to see the tape, I want you to see what happens. So just looking at simple price action so far, you can see on the one minute volume surge, strong move, break 72. Now it's getting rejected at 73. Now, just looking at this, obviously our game plan was to enter after 72. After 72 is where we become aware, where we start watching the stock. But now we see that at 72.92, that's where sellers stepped in and rejected this stock. So now as we're watching this now, what I want you to what I want you guys to see is I want you to see the moment this stock goes below 72, right? Look at this. The moment it goes below 72, if you look here, 72, 72, 72, and watch right when it goes below 72. It goes right below 72, right? Goes below 72, it's 71.95, 71.95, and then look at what happens. 71.95, 71.95, 71.91, 71.90, the bid is holding, the bid is holding, the bid is holding. And then as the bid is holding, look at what happens to the bid once again. The bid starts increasing, and right after it starts increasing, 72 tends to hold. Buyers are bringing it back up at 72. And as the buyers are bringing it back up at 72, look at the executions of the orders. The ex executions of the orders are aggressive buy orders. They're aggressive buyers stepping in. For example, the bid is at 71.96, right? The sellers are at 72.06. Execution at 72. Print at 72. Print at 72. Print at 72.06. Print at 72.12. And there's size here, right? And now the bid slowly starts creeping up too. The bid starts holding 72. So what do we know at 72? That around 72, there are potential buyers here holding up the bid. So as a day trader, we now know at 72, there are potential buyers that are holding up the bid. And you can see 72, 72, a one, one, 72, a one hits the bid. Look at the, look at the tape, the tape prints 72, 10, 72, 10, 72, 10. As it's print, printing 72, 10, the bid is also increasing. 
The bid is also increasing. The bid goes to 72.09, print gets to 72.11, ask goes higher. That's showcasing that there's potential buyers here. Potential buyers are holding this up. Now this right here is giving us a strong look on the trade. This is giving us a strong confirmation. Now where I messed up, as I where my original entry should have been, and I, I realized this after going back to the trade, was my setup should have came in here. That hey, if this stock can break 73 on a strong break, and I can read a strong break in 73 here, enter. That's what my game plan should have been. Now, obviously, I didn't take that trade. I'll show you where I traded it, where I entered, and I'll show you my entries and exits at the end. But that's the game plan I should have had. That's where I should have adjusted. Now, I did not execute that trade, and you guys are going to see what I mean. So right now, that should be the game plan. That we see that buyers are holding this up. That should show us some interest level. We see that sellers are rejecting this area at 73. So if that 73 area can get broken, we will look to take on a trade. That's what we should be looking at at this particular moment. Now, once again, we are at 935. Now, the next five minute candle is forming. Now, when you watch the next five minute candle, let's see what tends to happen. I'm just gonna fast forward a little bit. Let's see what happens. 72. Let's see what tends to happen right here. We're on our next minute and we are also on our next five minute candle. Now, if you take a quick look here, this is what I want to show you guys. Now, if you guys take a quick look here, once again, a trap. What happens here, if you guys saw it quickly went to 73 and quickly pulled back, that's the trap that people get in and panic. Now, let's go through the prints. You can see 72.7, 72.77, 72.8, 8, 85, 89, 90, and then watch, 95s, aggressive buying, a lot of aggressive buying, a lot of aggressive buying, a lot of prints at 73, a very tight ask, a very tight hold on the ask at 73, and then right when that ask gets pulled off at 73, when it gets taken off, look at how this stock just surges, 73, 07, 09, 10, 11, 13, 8, 14, 11, 12, 13, 7, increasingly. And then if you look, it goes right back to 72.88. Now, when you guys see stuff like this on the print, you have to be careful, right? Now, the reason you have to be careful is first and foremost, whenever you see a stock breaking out on a minute chart, don't enter right away. A lot of people enter right away. They're like, oh, I went to 73, let me enter. And then when they see this pullback or they see a little uh, consolidation or sideways movement, they panic. We don't want to get trapped in that. What we want to see is we want to see 73's break and hold. So in this situation, it broke 73, but it was like a quick two, three second break and then it flushed right back. The buyers pushed it up, but they were not able to sustain the move, right? Now that makes this area a little scary. That's where it's like, oh man, what's going on here? You can see it goes for a second try, goes for a second try. And if you look at the tape on the second try, gets rejected again on the second try once again. Now we're just gonna watch. Our job right now as traders is to watch price action. And obviously if you guys look at the five minute candle, not the best uh, area right now, you guys can see if someone entered, think about this for a second, let's pause. Let's say you entered on 73 break. Let's say you entered right there in 73. Now you see it moves a dollar down. You as a trader right now, are probably panicking, you're probably exiting, and as you should, because you're like, oh, I got in at 73, it's going to 72, it's dumping, the five minute looks weak, uh, I don't know what's going on, right? And that happened because you entered way too early, your entry point was super early, you were not patient, A, you didn't let the one minute close, and B, you got in right when it broke 73, and it broke only for three, four seconds, and then went right back down, right? Now, if you're taking that trade, not the best entry point, but now watching this stock and this, you guys are gonna see on a lot of day trades, especially when you're watching the one minute candle, is what you wanna watch for is you wanna see the 72 area hold. You wanna see this hold. Now it's not gonna hold perfectly, but you wanna see that when it does go below this area, buyers are able to bring it back up. Buyers are able to bring it back up. That showcases that there's still buying pressure around this area, right? Now if you go through the prints, you guys can see, see, 72, 72s, 72 goes below 72, 70, 71.94. See, it goes below it, goes below it, goes below it. 71.80s, 70s, 86, and then boom, comes right back to 72s. Right, you see that again? Goes below 72s and boom, 
comes right back above 72, 71.87, boom, back at 72. Over and over again. So bulls and bears are fighting. So if you haven't taken this trade, your only watch or only focus should be this area holding. If this area is holding, we know that this stock is consolidating. Now, if you look at the consolidation period, stock opened around 70, it's already up two, three points, right? And we're in six minutes. So it's maybe consolidating, it's maybe taking a break, it broke pre-market highs, there's a lot of action going on here because once it broke pre-market high, you can see a lot of other traders are taking this trade too, so obviously it's going to be a little messy. Now what we see is we see 72 is holding. Us seeing 72 is holding is showing us that there's strength here. We also see it's holding around the VWAP level, so the VWAP is working very, very well with the stock. So far everything looks good, no entry point yet right? No solid entry point yet. We're still watching the stock. We're still watching for, for, for an entry point. Entry point on this so far would be a break above 73, a strong break above 73, not just seeing the stock go above 73, guys. We want to see a strong break above 73. So as we're watching this, let's see what happens. This is the tape. You can see 73s print again, 73.15s. Boom. That's where my entry should have been. This is a strong point for an entry point. I did not take my entry here. I'll show you guys. This is where I should have taken my entry. I'm gonna pause it and just show you the tape for a second. If you guys take, see the tape, a lot and a lot of aggressive buying, a lot of aggressive buying. Buyers came in right here. At 73, buyers stepped in so aggressively. I saw this, I did not take this trade. I was not able to trigger. It just happened so quick in front of me. Obviously, if I could go back, I wish this is where I entered. I did not enter here. I'll show you guys once again where I entered. But this was, in my opinion, a phenomenal entry point. Broke this 73 mark. A lot of buying pressure. A lot of aggressive buyers. You guys can see on the prints showcasing aggressive buying, aggressive buying. Pretty healthy move here. This right here was a very, very, very strong move. Now, once again, I did not take the trade here. I'll show you guys where I took the trade. And you guys can see, even on the five minute chart, looks pretty, pretty solid, right? Once again, I'll show you where I took the trade. Pretty strong, St stock is looking very strong. Now, if you look at basic price action, you guys can see, goes up, consolidates, goes up, consolidates, go goes up, right? Now, my entry was in a few minutes, I'll show you, but that's where I should have entered. That was a phenomenal entry point, right? I didn't enter there. So I entered in another minute. So I entered on the next breakout. I entered at 941. Now what made me enter is if you guys take a look at this, you can see this huge rejection on the one minute. As I mentioned guys, when you guys see rejections like this on the one minute, don't panic. These one minute candles shake out a lot of people. Wait for the close of the candle, wait for it to maybe go around the critical level and then look to exit. There's no need to exit just yet. And you can see the same 73 area that got rejected before is holding. That same area is holding, okay? That same area right now is holding. Okay, now my entry on this was around this point. Now the reason I entered around here is because I saw on the tape, let me pause it. I saw on the tape on how 73 was aggressively holding I was also watching on the 73 break and I noticed even before how there was a lot of size rejecting this over here. The buyers flipped the story, the buyers held on the minute before and the buyers are holding again, right? So that gave me confidence that, hey, if I take this trade around here and the buyers don't show up, I'll exit around 715 so if this isn't able to hold, I will exit around there if the candle closes. I like this so far because I like the movement up. It made a strong move up, took a break, another strong move up, took a break, and there was a lot of ask orders here, a lot of sellers stepping in. Buyers were able to overtake that, and now buyers are, in, are now in control. And even if you look at the tape now, a lot of buyers are in control. They're holding this trade they're holding the stock and even if you go through the tape you guys can see look at the bid look at the ask look at the prints 73 73 strong 73s right 
And yeah, you're gonna see some strong weak ones, but seeing small weak prints are, are, are totally fine. You're gonna see stuff like that, that's okay. But majority of the prints are extremely, extremely strong. If you guys take a look, very, very strong print, especially the ones with a lot of size. Look at this, 72.95 bid, print at 73, ask at 73. Right, ask gets moved to 7306, print to 7303. Right, strong buyers are kicking in, they're holding this stock. So that's where my entry was. My entry around here was at 7322. I got in now. As I took this entry right here, I am now comfortable with this trade, knowing that there's a lot of potential buyers here. My original stop is around 71.5, but if I'm watching the tape and I see that the buyers aggressive buyers disappear and they're not holding this uh, stock up anymore, I might even exit somewhere here. But as of right now, I'm in this trade here. I like the entry point, I like how it's looking, I like how the buyers are holding this trade up and how everything is looking pretty strong. Now we're just gonna go minute by minute and just see how everything is flowing. Now, as we're as we're looking at everything, once again, we're seeing how everything is flowing. Is everything flowing? What's going on? And also, if we take a look at SPY real quick, I'm going to pause this just to give you guys a view on the market. This is the market. Look at the market, SPY. On the open, what did SPY do? SPY is holding this 285 level. So SPY is holding. Like I mentioned in the beginning of the video, if the market was dumping and started selling off very aggressively, that would push me back on taking on the trade. But the fact that market's holding sideways is giving me enough confirmation for this stock. Now, obviously, if the market was rallying, that would make it make things a lot easier and a lot better for me. But that's obviously not the case. But as of right now, the only thing I would like to see is I would like to see the market hold. Now, continuing with this play, Another cool thing is the VWAP. Now, if you guys pay attention to the VWAP, what the VWAP in this particular point is showcasing, it's showcasing that this stock right here has strong volume, right? The volume is supporting the price. Now, if VWAP is ever flat and the stock is going up, that showcases that this is a weak move. But the fact that the VWAP is going higher and higher and higher, that itself is showcasing me that this move is supported by volume and I wanna see it be supported by volume. So, so far, I like everything about this trade. I am in 500 shares at this particular point. Once again, I'll show you my trade outcome at the end and what is going on. Now, usually when I'm day trading, guys, I have another screen open. Uh, on, that, on that screen, what I usually do is I'm looking at the overall market, what the overall market is doing. And if I'm day trading I, uh, for TD, I usually like to have my active trader on and I'm usually buying using this active trader tab. Right, so I'm usually buying using this this uh, this bar right here. Uh, let me set this up just to show you guys how this would work. So I'm just gonna fake buy the order. Let's say use market. And once again, I am on the on demand feature on TD. So this is allowing me to go back in time. Right, you guys can see position PNL for the day PNL open. But I am in 500 shares at this particular moment, and I will show you the real trade after. Once again, this is. TD's on-demand feature. Now, my next entry comes in in a few minutes. Let me show you guys that too. So, so far, if you guys look at this trade, everything looks very, very strong. Everything looks good. And also, if we look at the overall market, the overall market is still holding, right? The overall market is still holding. Uh, I, I don't really like how it's looking, but it's not dumping hard, right? That's what I ultimately care about. I care about the market not dumping. If the market starts dumping, very aggressively, that's where I, I, I kind of start panicking, I start getting scared, but the fact that the market is holding uh, at least the 285s or the pre-market lows and it's slowly bleeding out, that's allowing me to be a little bit more comfortable than maybe seeing a strong, strong bleed, right? So let me just open up the market here so you guys can see. This is the market, right? It's not now, if the market starts aggressively dumping, that's where I would maybe start looking away from this trade. But so far, you guys can see. Where did Roku go? So far, you guys can see trade is looking pretty, pretty strong. Now, my next entry was around here. This was my next entry around 946. Now, here I added 500 more shares. I saw a strong break, and I added 500 more shares at 7481. So I'm just going to use buy market. 
Now I added to my position. I increased my position size. I saw a lot of consolidation, a lot of sideways movement, and this showcased me, especially on the tape, that this looks like a very strong move. And also, if you guys look at the five minute, you guys can also see in the five minute how powerful it looks, how strong it looks. Pretty strong play so far. Everything looks phenomenal with the stock. So that's what gave me confidence to add more. Now the question is, where did I take some of my position off? That's what I'm going to show you guys. Now, if you guys, if you guys are, are seeing this, you guys can understand that when you're day trading, you need a lot of patience. A lot of patience. You need to have a lot of clarity on understanding where you're entering, where you're taking trades, and so on. Now, one thing I, I wasn't or I didn't like at this particular moment was the market. Now, this is where the market starts making a new low. You guys take a look at the overall market. Market is making a new low. Let me go to one minute. You guys can see market is making new lows. Market is pushing down. I'm not liking that. I'm not comfortable. I'm like, oh man, the market's going down. And the second thing I did not like at this particular moment is let's just zoom out and go to a bigger time frame, right? I'm going to zoom out and go to a bigger time frame. Now, if I zoom out and go to a bigger time frame, you can see Roku gapped up a strong gap play, gap and go play, but now it's also facing an all time high. 77.57, all time high, right? So that is a major level for Roku. Roku is now facing that point. You guys can see Roku is now facing that point. So because of that, there's a few things that kicked in for me. Number one, Roku is facing an all time high, right? I'm up on the trade. Now, what do I want to do, right? Do I want to take some off the table? Do I want to hold? So as I continue to keep watching the stock, I do take some off the table. Also, like I mentioned, looking at the market is very important. What do we see with the market? 284.07 holding, right? Pretty strong holding right now. A continuation bleed isn't going to be something I really like, but what was very interesting is the fact that the market was pushing down. Roku was still holding up. Now, if market was flat or market was going up, that would give me more confidence to maybe hold through my play. But the things that really shook me out and did not give me confidence were number one, the fact that Roku is going to a resistance point of an all time high, and the fact that Roku is also uh, trading like this on a day where the market is not looking the best. Now, you guys can see this is why having your critical levels, guys, having them established is very important because think about it. Let's say you're just trading and you didn't have your critical levels established. You wouldn't know that you're facing a wall at this point. You would not have any idea that you're going to face a major, major wall at this particular point. Right now, my exit point came around somewhere here around 957. 957 is where I took off 500 shares. Why? Because as I'm looking at this level, I'm like, OK, the stock is clearly having a hard time at the all time high. I'm not really liking how the market is looking. So with that being said, let me take some off. Let me lock in profits. Once again, let me lock in profits. So I lock in 500 shares around 957. So I'm like, let me lock in 500 shares. So at this point, what happens is I locked in. I locked in profits. I decreased risk because now I only have 500 shares instead of owning uh, a full thousand shares, right? So I cut down my position sizing by a lot. Since I cut down my position sizing, now it's easier and I'm more comfortable in trading this. What a lot of people tend to do is they wanna buy here and sell at the very top. They wanna buy their full position here and sell their full position there. Now, obviously, like I mentioned, a few things I did not like. I did not like the fact that the market was going lower. I did not like that it's uh, having a, a, a kind of a hard time around its all time high. Uh, I took my profits. I made a little bit of profit. I'm happy with that. Now, the remaining position, if this remaining position goes below this 74 area, I will then exit. Now, if you guys notice something, as I'm trading, my mental stop losses are adjusting on its own. Right, so if this breaks this 70, 76 area, I said 74. If it breaks this area right here, right, figure let's say it goes below this area right here, the same area I was having a hard time with before, buyer stepping in, buyer stepping in. If it breaks this area, that's where I would possibly look to exit. If it doesn't break this, I'm comfortable in holding this position for a little bit longer period of time, right? So it's either gonna trade sideways, or if it doesn't trade sideways, 
it's probably gonna continuously break out. So at this point, all I'm doing is I understand if it gets around here, I'm out. If it breaks this, my stop, my mental stop gets moved up and now I will ride out the play for as long as I possibly can or until I think it's dying out. And you can see how the stock is moving and I'll show you guys where my exit was as well. Now this is where, like I said, when you guys are day trading, you have to mentally adjust your stop losses. You have to know where you're gonna exit. You have to be very flexible on adjusting your game plan, right? You can't look at your PL because if you look at the PL, you can see how it's fluctuating up and down, right? You see how it's fluctuating up and down. You can't do that. You gotta look at the chart. The only thing I'm looking at, at the chart right now is if this goes below 76.4, right? And it, it closes below that. And I see that the buyers aren't strong. It's unable to hold. I'm out. I'm not, I'm not gonna take this trade. I'm out, right? Now, also, if you look at the overall market, let's just pull that up for a second. What's happening to the overall market? If you look at SPY, you guys can see. SPY is holding. Pretty strong sign. I'm liking how SPY is holding. I don't like the fact that it's down about two points, but it's holding, right? It's holding. It's still making a low of the day, but it's still kind of slowly holding, slowly maybe bleeding out, but it's still not something that is giving me a heavy sign of, of, of exit, right? At this point, as SPY was dumping, market was still holding up strong. I mean, as, as SPY was dumping, the stock was still holding up strong, which was surprising and showcased the strength. Now, the exit of this stock, oh, I just missed. The exit of this stock was around this point. What happened is I panicked, which is something I did not like. So I exited right here, right? So my exit point was around 76.50, I exited right here. Why here? Because I panicked on this candle. Now, if you guys take a look at this candle, this candle looks great right now, but you also have to understand that at one point, this candle looked like this. This is how the candle looked, okay? The candle legitimately looked like that was a red candle, a huge red move down. Once again, that I just panicked right there. And since I panicked, all I did was I hit sell market, I got out. I immediately exited my position. Not the best exit point. I panicked, I should have waited for the next candle to formulate. Now let's just go through the full day and see how this stock played out for the day. Now when we go through the full day, this is what we see, right? Let me hide. This is what happened for the day. Now, if you guys take a look, obviously me going back to this, I wish I entered here and I held throughout the day, right? I could have made a lot more money. Yes, that's, that's, that's the wish and goal everybody has. But let's be realistic, guys. When you guys are setting these goals, what you want to understand is you want to understand these price movements in between, these rejections, these pullbacks, this sloppy price action. Are you gonna hold through that? Most likely not. Now my entry and exit here, you guys can see, I panicked. I panicked right there, that, that was my last position. If I didn't panic, I would've maybe panicked there. I wish I didn't panic, but it happens to the best of us, right? Now if these two crazy moves down did not happen, flush out some traders, I could've maybe sold at 80 bucks maybe 81, 82, whatever the case is, but that's where my exit was. Now let's go to the trade real quick and let's break that down. All right, so this is the trade breakdown. So as you guys can see, my entries are right here, exits are right here. Uh, trade outcome was about $2,300. Trade rating, I gave it an eight, I didn't give it a 10 and I'll explain why. What I want you guys to understand is just because you make money or you made money on a trade does not mean it's, it's, it should get a 10 rating or an A rating. Or, and, and same thing, if you guys lose money on a trade, it doesn't mean that just because you lost money, you should give it a four or a two or a three, right? The whole idea is to understand what you could have done better, what you messed up on and so on. Now, one thing I liked about this trade was solid entry points. I liked the fact that I was able to size in, I was able to build my position. Uh, what I didn't like is I panicked on the second exit. Uh, and what I also liked is it was a great add to my watch list for the day. It was a great find. And once again, this was a stock that had earnings. I looked for pre-market movers uh, and I saw Roku had earnings. And since I saw it had earnings, I was al already very prepared for this trade. Now, once again, all entries and exits right here. Now, if you move forward, this is my first entry, my second entry, 
my exit and my exit. Now, if you guys take a look, my exit right here, I panicked. And since I panicked, that kind of made me miss out on this move. What I could have done better was wait on this panic, wait for the candle to close and wait for the next candle as this is a one minute chart, right? My entries I was pretty happy with. I really, really like this entry right here. And also this entry gave me a lot of comfortability knowing that there's buying pressure here. What I did not like once again was this exit point. I did not like that exit point. The first exit was phenomenal. I like the fact that I took profit off the table, uh, but the second one was not a good one. Now, this is just one of the trades moving forward. As I mentioned, I'm going to show you more trades with a lot of different ideas, different concepts. Uh, some trades I made money, some trades I lost money. Uh, and, and the whole idea is of with these trades is for you guys to t walk away with just understanding the thought process of, oh, how I found them, where my entries were, what I could have done better, what I think I did great on, and kind of use that as a learning curve.